What's going on guys? In this video, I'm pretty excited because behind me, I've got our Pro Charge Z06 Corvette. So this C5 Corvette, yes, it's Pro Charged. And this is our road course duty vehicle. So this is the one we take to autocross events, uh, road course stuff. We've been to Sebring with it so far. And we've just been getting this thing dialed in. We picked this up earlier this year for the low price of $12,000. With the Pro Charger kit, it's got CNC ported heads. It's got some sort of camshaft. We don't know what it is because I didn't really get a lot of information when we received it. Now it's got Ride Tech coilover suspension, Ride Tech sway bars, Ride Tech Delrin complete bushing kit. We rebuilt the transmission, put a center force clutch in it, and we've just been going through this thing like crazy. One of the things that's always bothered me about this car. I don't mind the front end, but the back of it always just looked like it was missing something. So. In this video, we are gonna fix this. So behind me, I've got a huge wang from Nine Lives Racing. This is gonna be a chassis mounted wing. Coincidentally, I honestly didn't plan this because I'm gonna change the whole theme of this car at some point here, but we've got the Rocket Racing wheels on here and my wing from Nine Lives came unfinished, uncoated, which you can order it however you want. You can either wrap it, you can get it with a coating on it, but this is just bare aluminum. And it's actually gonna go pretty well with these wheels at the moment. So um, it just got some wooden end plates on it. Luckily that wooden end plate kind of saved the wing because it was <laughs> the little wooden end plate got uh, busted in shipping, but the rest of everything was okay, thankfully. In this box here is all of our stuff. So I kind of just went through everything on receiving this stuff. It was all wrapped and packaged, but um, I just got it out of the packing so that I can make sure I've got all the pieces to get this job done. So this is gonna be a chassis mounted wing. This is going to bolt right to the chassis itself. And then that big, huge wing is gonna go on top of it. Okay, first things first, let's pop this rear bumper off so that we can get to the chassis and the frame on this to mount those brackets. All right, so this is my first time taking the bumper off, but um, I kind of did a little bit of research before this. So at least on our Z06 with this hatch or your convertible or your fixed roof coupe, you're gonna have T15s all across the top here. So I got those all out and then there's four T15s that hold this whole bezel deal on here. So then I can unclip the lights and then you're gonna see these right here. Those have to come out and we essentially have to take out all lights. So again, T15s, take all the lights out, disconnect all that. And then I guess we can reach up here to this here, the tail light like that. And we can just pull that off so that we don't have to worry about the third brake light. So I'm gonna go ahead, pop all this stuff out. Um, we can either squeeze this off or just spin these, drop these out as such. Probably the easier way. There, there's those. This piece is off. Now I can take out the taillights. All right, so taillights are out, disconnected. All that stuff's disconnected. There's four speed clips across the bottom of the bumper. And then I just finished taking all the hardware out on that side. I'm gonna show you guys hopefully on this side what the situation is here. You're gonna see right here, there's some hardware. So uh, I don't know if yours is gonna be like this, but mine's got a ground strap there it looks like. And then you're gonna see an eight mil up here. So there's an eight mil head there. And then you're gonna have two 10 mils so there's a nut on the other side of there, a nut on the other side of there, and then down there, you got those two 10 mil bolts that have to come out. So we'll take all that out, and then this can slide out of here. Also, you'll notice these here, these Christmas tree clips. So make sure you detach them from the bumper, otherwise you'll be taking the wire harness with you. The next what I've gone ahead and done is just quickly assembled the wing at least to the brackets. So the way this works is the bracket sits like this and then this little extension goes on that side and then this is effectively in line with here. So I'm sure every wing might be a tiny bit different but the measurement that I'm coming up with is 22 inches and 7 eighths to the outside edge of here. So what I'm gonna do is do the same thing. So 22 and 7 eighths to the outside of this bracket, which is effectively right here. Or what you could do is measure the inside and then the inside of here and make sure that you're installing these on the back of the car in the same width as your wing itself. Because we are gonna have to drill four holes on each bracket. All the hardware is supplied, you can see right there. 
but we'll have to drill out those four holes. And uh, I did take off the foam that's underneath the bumper. It's held on by three 10 mils. So you'll see one, two, and three. And this is actually dead smack in the middle of the car. You can use this as a reference point if you would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff measured out and then we can start drilling through the rebar. Okay, so just getting this mounted and situated. So from the center, I ended up measuring out in the midway point. Like I said, mine was 22 and 7 16 from the inside to inside. So I made my marks there lined it right up and then I got to do the same thing there and then I just drilled a hole one thing I am going to do though is once you kind of get one hole at least situated I don't know if you guys will be able to see it but it's not fully sitting like flush because it's getting into right there so I do have to I'm going to dremel this out a little bit so that I can get it to fully sit forward before I mount and drill these holes there so I'm going to get the same thing situated on this side that way we've got that in place and then uh, we can just keep drilling holes. I've got my marker, I've got my square. The square has been pretty handy too because once I made my line here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it with permanent marker. Then I was able to just put the square on the rebar, make my line and that's my line for my inside edge. So I just sat the bracket there, made the mark with my permanent marker, hit it with a center punch, drilled it and uh, you're able to actually get your hand all the way in here to the nuts for the back. So fairly straightforward. And uh, let's get the other one on there. Damn! All right, so I just threw the wing on here just to double, triple check, make sure our distances are good, that we're centered, and everything is looking good because once we start getting too far ahead, it's gonna be a huge recourse if you have to adjust this thing because once you carve out your bumper, all that kind of stuff. So I got the wing just kind of loosely mounted there, nothing too official, but what I'm gonna do is press it forward and I'm gonna use my cordless rotary tool and go ahead and just notch these out so that this thing can seat all the way forward. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we got the wing all mounted, all of our hardware is in. We actually have to put this down what we're gonna do is put tape on here and measure all the measurements of where these are at so we can cut the bumper. All right, so next up comes probably the most nerve wracking part, but if you do it this way, it's really not that bad. So my paint is not anywhere near perfect, but I figured no point in making it worse. What we got here is a carpenter's square. So obviously if you have really nice paint, you'll wanna protect all this, but uh, either way, I'm still doing it the way you guys probably would. So we got a carpenter's square, and what we're gonna do essentially is just map out exactly where this all lands. And I've got all the hardware on here tight as if it's going to be you know, ready to go because we wanna have all this stuff solid exactly where it's going to be. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put our carpenter square here and we're gonna make various indications of where everything is. So we're gonna butt this up to the end here. We're gonna draw a square here. So and we're gonna mark what this is. And essentially what we're gonna do is map out here on our painter's tape where the end is, where the start is, where the inside is, and where the outside is. And we'll mark all that over here. That way we can use this once we take this all out. We're gonna put our bumper back here and we're gonna recreate exactly what we indicated here by moving this square around. We're gonna map that out on the top of the rear bumper so we can cut it out in the exact spot that we need to. Okay, I'll quickly show you the measurements that I did. So I went outside and rear, inside and rear, and then the front edge. So front edge, I simply was just measuring the distance right here so that I can get this measurement and that's my front edge outside and rear so this outside edge right here squared up and then right to the end of here so that's my outside and rear and then I didn't change the orientation this the whole time this is my inside right here this is my inside and rear so the end of my square is right to the very back of the bracket so that gives me enough to draw this rectangle out on my bumper i can do the same thing on the other side all right so what i ended up doing was just extending my lines because you got to remember once you take this off you're not going to have anything to square up on so you want as much length as possible here so that you can really get that there so what i'm going to do now is we're going to unbolt this stuff take it out of the way we'll put the bumper back on secure it somewhat at least so that it's mapped out in the right 
area. We want to have it relatively tight on here. It doesn't have to be hundred percent, but at least sucked up because exactly where it's going to land is where we're going to cut. All right. So I got the bumper here and I got my marks laid out. So I'm going to go a little bit wider, nothing too crazy, but just enough to give this thing a little bit of wiggle room. So there's my two marks. It's going to go right to the very edge on both. So, and then this line here, that's, that's where it goes to the front. So I'm going to start and finish with a drill bit hole on each end there and there. And then I'm going to cut two slots in each one and then uh, see how she fits. All right, so I've got my two slots cut out. Um, this bumper has been repainted, so there was a kind of, it was almost impossible to like not keep it from chipping on the very edge, but I did my best. It's still pretty clean. And then I just test fitted this through here. So these slide up and down through there nicely. So that way we should hopefully be okay, but we'll go ahead and bolt these back onto the car and then hopefully we can slide this bumper cover over top. All right, so bumpers back off. Our supports are back on. And what I gotta do now is just cut out the bumper foam so that that can go back over top. So I'm just gonna go ahead, mark it off, and then uh, cut two slits in it so that this can go back over top because I might be able to actually reassemble the bumper and put that all back together if everything fits good. All right, so I used this multi-tool here just with a normal blade on it to cut the foam and just follow right along there. You can pretty much follow that inside edge there right where your bracket is and that will line you up perfectly for where you gotta cut. All right, so got this back in here. Yes, this might be pushing this part of the foam out a quarter of an inch right in this very spot, but hopefully it's not an issue. I don't think it's going to be, but um, I'll let you guys know if that matters because all I did was notch out where it goes around the actual support. So let's go ahead. Throw the bumper cover back on and see how she fits. All right, well, I'm happy to tell you guys I just slipped the bumper down over top and this fits solid. The other cool thing too is um, you'll notice when you're assembling it, like not that it's a ton of flex, but there's a little bit of flex out of the top brackets. As soon as I put this bumper over top, like it adds so much strength and I have zero of the screws in. So it's just adding strength to the side movement of these plates as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, fasten the bumper down, same reverse steps as when we took it apart. I don't wanna bore you guys with that part of it, but let me just get the bumper back on here, get all the fasteners back in, and then we can get to putting the wing on and the end plates. All right, you guys, so we've got the wing on here and mounted, and this thing looks absolutely awesome. Like, check out that presence from the back. Super, super happy with how it came out. Um, they sell it in two different versions. So I've got mine in the standard width, and then they also sell a little bit wider wing if you have a wide body kit to bring it out. So right now, um, we're pretty much in line with the side of the car for the end plates. And I gotta do a bunch of adjustment and stuff like that. Plus I'm waiting for my bigger end plates to arrive. And then I might also do some other stuff with putting, um, there's some different stuff like gurney flaps that you can put in here to kind of catch a little bit more. But right now, 
I'm also waiting for the front splitter kit to arrive. So we've got a whole front splitter kit that should be here probably in about a couple weeks that we ordered for the whole front end of the car to match and add some downforce in the front. Then once we get that tailored in, we can start adding more to the back and all that. But right now this thing might be trying to pop a wheelie, <laughs> so to speak. Um, also, I will tell you guys that this is procharged. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, but we probably are going to be taking off the procharger kit for a road course. And if you're on this video, you might be um, somebody that has a Corvette that's doing road course as well. But we're probably gonna be taking off because it's adding a ton of heat. Um, we're gonna be doing some more cooling mods, but um, that Pro Charger is adding a lot of heat to the whole system. So we might take that off, shelve it for now. Um, I also have some hood vents, some track spec hood vents coming for the hood to try to get rid of some of that heat. But super, super happy with how this Nine Lives Racing wing came out. If you guys are curious, we have a ton of videos on this car on this channel. Go check them out. I'll link the Nine Lives Racing wing down below for you guys. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. We'll catch you guys on the next video.